Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, 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 sure. Do how ones they said. It'll be fine, they said. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, 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 sure. Okay, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Hey, what's going on, everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today we're joined by Justin Timberlake. He's one of the century's most prolific and successful singer-songwriters with more than 32 million albums sold, 10 Grammy Award wins, four Emmys, and not to be outdone, you can catch him as Branch in Trolls World Tour, which is set to theaters on April 17th. Justin Timberlake, welcome to the show. Thank you. I know that you're a Memphis boy, but have you ever made the trip to Nashville for that hot chicken at like Prince's or Hattie B's? Hattie B's, yeah. I've never gone the whole the whole ride. I'm 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 too afraid I won't make it home in time. Well, buckle up your seatbelt, yeah. Justin Timberlake, because we're about to go for. Is a there ride. a restroom close by? I'm serious. I feel like I should have worn a diaper. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, where are we starting? Right at the oh, handle there, yep. Okay. All right. Huh? That's actually quite enjoyable. That's how we started off. Here. I feel like that's the only time I'm gonna say that today. <laughs> So as you mentioned up top, you returned to Troll Town later this month, not only Good. in your role as Branch, but also as the soundtrack's executive music producer. What are some of the unique challenges in writing a song that's for a specific scene in Trolls, but then can also live by itself, totally independently, divorced from the film as a hit? Um, it is challenging because you have to be specific, but also ambiguous. You always get like a specific criteria, what they're sort of going for. And then you kind of pick a vibe. That's what we did the first time. Like, can't stop the feeling. So it's it's been really cool to almost go on a little bit of a like history trek with the music. Is someone playing hide and seek in the rafters? So uh, inside baseball, we're in like the voices soundstage. Oh, you know. So I don't know. Like maybe like setting up like the whole voice stage over there. I feel like that's a ghost up there saying, "Don't go any further." And that's already hot to me, bro. That's already a kick. Earlier than you were expecting it. Yeah, earlier. A little bit for me too, even. You know, I yeah? think this is a hot two for us. Really? Yeah, we're 10 seasons in. This does feel like the hottest two we've had. I mean, I don't know how you do that. How do you do this every, well, every time? I'm a, I feel like I'm an opportunist, right? And so when I first started, you know, you always have, you have this idea, but who knows if that idea is ever going to get off the ground. Why do I keep going? Why am I doing that? <laughs> But that's why I keep going, you know? Mm -hmm. You get another opportunity, you get another opportunity. And then now here I am sitting in front of Justin Timberlake, shooting the shit over wings. You know what I mean? What am I supposed to do, run away from that? All right, bro. <laughs> All right, sold. Let's so keep this train going. Yeah, so, let's keep it going. All right. So it's clear that you ride hard for Memphis. It's a city that's shaped and inspired you your whole career. For sure. What's a more essential Memphis dining experience? Is it the burger at Dyer's or is it the fried chicken at Gus's? I love Gus's chicken, but there was a, they may be out of business now, but there was a place that me and my friends used to go to that was out of town and off the highway. And it was called the store on the hill. And they used to smoke like a whole pork shoulder every day. And that was the spot. What's the difference between a great Elvis impersonator and a mediocre Elvis impersonator? You cut the, the lip. Lip. Uh, it was like a, ugh. And then there's like a husky, but there's always a vibrato. There's like a vibrato that comes with a good Elvis. So when you hear there's that. There's different Elvises too. The most popular Elvis to impersonate is probably the Vegas Elvis, which is all like kung fu kicks and like air guitar. Very late stage Elvis. Yeah. I mean, Eddie Murphy always had my favorite Elvis oh, joke where he was like, we're going to win this race. Anyone? Am I dating myself right now? <laughs> You're all like 14. And no. then finally, let's say I'm loading up a playlist, right, for a road trip to Grind City. What are three essential, non-negotiable albums that have to be on it? Oh, shit. You gotta have something Otis, or Al, something Al Green, or, my nose is already running. 
Um, when I think of Memphis, I think of Stax. I mean, obviously you think of Elvis, so I guess you'd have to have some sort of Elvis greatest hits. Uh, a 3-6 Mafia album, not to get into a debate. Uh, sort of the originators of triplet trap music, hop. How many have I named? At least five or six. Have I? <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, then there you go. Fiji Fire. So one of the great genres of YouTube video is Timbaland playing beats for artists for the first time, then mm. reacting to them in a very excited way. Do you remember how he reacted playing you Cry Me a River the first time? The crazy thing about Cry Me a River was he beatboxed at first. Uh, I came into the studio and I was uh, less than thrilled. <laughs> and uh, I, he, I think he saw my mood and he just started like, he just started like, and he started doing this like crazy, this is the first time I ever beatbox with chicken in my mouth. I'm actually shocked that I got that out. Um, We're hyped that we got the exclusive. <laughs> the exclusive chicken <laughs> side cheek beatbox. Um, we were working with Scott Storch as well, and Scott laid the roads, and then next thing I know, like, I, I kind of like blacked out. I was just off to the races writing the song. Four hours later, I was like written and recorded, and then it was, oh, we started working on all the post-production. Little bit of a sneak attack. Yeah, no, I think it's a, it's like a throat scratch yeah, with yeah, this yeah. one, you know? If yeah. they're all hitting in different ways, this is the first sort of like throat scratch. Yeah, yeah. It was kind of like, it started off like, hey, how's it going? And then it was that guy at the party who like, two beers in, he's, he's leaning on people for no reason. And then he's like shouting at people an hour later. I know, and I feel like, Somewhere around I feel like that's here. where we're headed. Yes, uh, we're headed towards like a break a chair over somebody's yeah, yeah, yeah. head kind of drunk, yeah. you know? Followed by like, like, like full on like tears yeah. and breakdown. <laughs> you don't even know, man. <laughs> that's where we're headed, right? That's where we're going. Okay, cool, that. cool. Great. I'm glad, I'm glad we know. So your career it spans so many facets of the entertainment industry, but out of curiosity, where does creating your own hype be certified Air Jordan fall on your list of career accomplishments? Probably very, very high. That holds a high space of real estate. There was a moment um, where Tinker and the brand were going to make a new shoe for me for a tour. And sneak in, sneak attack. <laughs> Here it comes. And um, our first meeting, Tinker's kind of sitting there. We're talking about inspiration, where you headed, who are your idols? And he starts from an ethos there, and then they came back six months later, and that's when we started talking about an actual sneaker. There's probably two or three other ones that we've talked about. Some sketches in the vault. Reworking or sort of innovating. Starting to get like a dizzy vibe. Is that like, did you ever consider that this whole thing is like a health hazard? I always am like waiting because now we are like 10 seasons in, like 200 right. episodes, and I am waiting. Like, I'm like, the thing that takes it down right. is going to be like a high you have, profile. Do you guys celebrity. have good legal? Do you have like a good thing going? <sighs> we put a lot of. I feel like. We put a lot of trust in Randy, and he seems okay. like a decent guy when I talk to him, okay. but I don't think we've really challenged him with anything yet. Right, right. So. All right, well. Maybe it's today. It's, it, there's, I mean, this is, a, this is a health hazard. I mean, let's not, let's be real about this. But voluntary, you know, that's what we can lean on. No, totally, totally. I haven't signed anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Justin, we have a recurring segment on our show called Explain That Gram, where we do a deep dive on our guest's mm -hmm. Instagram, pull interesting pictures that need more context. And today, Justin, we have a basketball theme for you. So we'll show you the picture. You just tell us the bigger story. And then first up, it's you courtside with J.J. Watt. Mm. I actually did Fallon last week and J.J. Watt was on. Oh, you, they did hot ones. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's right. Look at you keeping up with it. Yeah. Well, Fallon won't 
He like sends me his, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, he doesn't do that. Funny enough, we were at dinner together two nights later and he said that you guys did hot ones and that I was, I was coming on. Wow. Yeah. The universe. You're uh, it's a circle. You're part of the crew, man. <laughs> you're part of the crew. But JJ said that you choreographed a touchdown dance for him and then he did it on the show. I mean, if somebody can grab it and show me the dance, then, then I'll let you know if I did it or not. <laughs> Check the tape, make sure that you co-sign it on an artistic yeah. level. All right, next up, this is kind of surreal. You had like oh, a yeah. real life, yeah, yeah, yeah. white men can't jump moment with Woody That's Harrelson. That's exactly what that is. So I was shooting a comedy in New York uh, with Mila Kunis called Friends with Benefits and Woody plays my boss. I was like, we have to write like a basketball scene in the movie because if we Just have so we Woody have Harrelson, that. we have to have like a white man can't jump moment and he has to dunk the ball. So that's where that came from. Um, have you ever met Woody? No, never. I want him on the show so bad. He lives up to everything. The myth. He lives up to everything you, you want Woody Harrelson to be. He's a, he's a full on rock star. All right, so here you are getting deed up by Usher. Mm -hmm. And then I'm not sure if you're aware of this or not, but The Ringer actually named you one of the greatest all time NBA all-star celebrity game players. Oh, really? The, the spice of that one just got went through and up and is behind my right eye. So what's the question again? Do you have like a most notable athletic achievement in all of those games? Like Oh, there... oh, oh, hitting a jumper on Kenny Smith. There's actual, there's footage of it. And, and, and Chuck won't let him live it down. And it's not really that big a deal because he basically just saw me and was like, there's no way this kid can hit a jumper. And I did and I don't think I scored for the rest of the game because he basically was, he just deed me up the rest of the game. Okay, I feel like this is the this is a turning point, right? Yep, yep. We're in the back half. This here. is like we only scored ten points each in the first half, and now we got to go like full Pat Mahomes with this shit. Yep. Okay. All right, comeback time. All right, what is this one? Thai. Thai green chili over here. Right. I feel like this is gonna. I feel like this is. I feel like this is the, the where it health, changes. This is where the health hazard part kicks in. Okay. So your work behind the scenes in music it goes well beyond this film. You obviously have a list of writing credits a mile long, from writing for Rihanna and Reba McIntyre to doing drums and keyboard for Charlie Wilson. How's that? Uh. The hot tie. I didn't hear a fucking word you just said. <laughs> Sorry, go back. What do you think would fascinate people about how some of their favorite music is made? Like, can you unpackage the camps thing where like some of the best producers and top writers in the industry, they'll just send on one location for weeks, mm. craft music that can sometimes, you know, each track be $100,000 before an artist even walks into the studio? Um, I think the person that I probably most famously worked with is probably Timbaland and the Neptunes. When we were doing my second record, Future Sex Love Sounds, Nate was working on the keyboards with this new arpeggiated synthesizer, you know, plug-in, and all I heard was and I was like, I don't know what that is, but I, 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 we have whatever that is, we have to work on that now. The first song we did was What Goes Around, the second song we did was My Love, and then the third song we ended up doing was Sexy Back. You know, you get in you get into certain vibes for a, a week or so, and you just gotta, I don't know, you gotta follow it. Yeah, and it could be something as loose as like you banging on buckets. Like oh, totally. For the, like the Yonsei part in Partition, where you're just like banging on buckets. Wow. Wow, that was some Nardwar shit. <laughs> that was good. Yes, that's how that came about. Right, and uh, what, Beyonce's like freestyling while you're banging on buckets. So I'm, so I'm banging on buckets and, and, and Dream came in and he started like freestyling a melody to it. And so then we just started messing with it that way. That felt like a camp to me. Cause you were just kind of, everybody was just spitting ideas back and forth. Like Miguel came in, I had to leave town for a second and Miguel came in and worked on this ballad and wrote these verses and then I came back in and wrote a hook to it and um, it was a fun time. It was a really fun time. 
Speaking yeah. of fun times, Justin. Okay. <laughs> Are you ready to move oh, on? Yeah. I'm ready. The Stargazer here at number seven. The Stargazer. Okay. Like you'll see stars when you eat this shit? Only one way to find out. Okay. All right. I'm gonna go for a real sauce heavy part of this wing. It's getting real. So you hosted Saturday Night Live real. five There's ghost times. peppers. There's ghost peppers in that. And they come through. Yeah, they don't ghost. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, this is it's this happening. is this is like the quick this is like the quick 15 set. Like we're getting I know what's happening right now. And I can't stop it. You know what I mean? Like, I know what's about to happen to me right now. So get your memes ready. So you've hosted Saturday Night Live five times, including twice doing this is double serious. duty. Who do you think does the best Justin Timberlake impression? Is it Fallon, Matt Damon, or Andrew Garfield? Ooh, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with uh, uh, Andrew Garfield. His had the most nuance. He caught some things that happened to me that are uncontrollable, um, where he sort of busts me up, and my face starts to contort a little, like it's probably gonna do in the next three wings. And then I read that you were really the one who stood by Dick in the Box. You know, even when Andy Samberg, even when everybody else around it was like a little weary about it, I heard that you were the one who was, who stood by his convictions That's and true. really made that happen. That's true. Well, here's the, 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 the story that people may not know about D and B, as I like to call it, <laughs> is, uh, uh, here comes the snot, bro. Um, uh, uh, oh, that's serious. That's serious. We have three more to go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, 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 sure. Do how ones they said. It'll be fine, they said. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, 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 sure. Okay, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. You look fine. Um, um, the thing people don't know about, uh, the thing people don't know about D and a B mm -hmm. is Lauren was like, you know, we have to get you in with the Lonely Island guys. There's song and dance and it's comedy. And, and that's when I first met Andy and we, we hit it off immediately. So Wednesday comes around and we come up with nothing. So, uh, sorry, I will arrive at the point. This ghost pepper got me crazy right now. <laughs> okay, so we were like, what if we came up with like a duo of guys who are still stuck in a time and a certain style with like the silk suits and the, you know, the herringbone chains and well and meticulously sculpted facial hair. Am I describing in sync? This is weird. <laughs> I just realized that we took so much from those groups. Holy shit. Wow, hot ones. Finally, Yorma says, well, what if we do the old like popcorn at the movies prank? And I was like, what? He goes, you know, you dick in the popcorn. And I was like, that sounds super creepy, bro. To which we then said, yeah, that's totally appropriate for two guys that are completely misled about what's appropriate, right? <laughs> Friday we shoot all day, and we don't get done until like 3 a.m. on Saturday. And then the FCC shows up. They're like, you can't say dick on the air. And we're like, oh, right. But if you just bleep it, would we be fine? And she said, yeah, if you bleep it out, then, then it's fine. And I mean, I think the irony of that is I think the funnier version is the bleeped out version. Sometimes it works out that way. Right? Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, I, I fully believe that, that, that I, that, that idea would not have been seen all the way through if the bigwigs would have known what we were doing. This one's heavily coated. I feel like this is gonna go really bad after this. I noticed that this is the first one you haven't asked a question right as I dug in. You're waiting for... I'm anticipating. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just making sure everything's okay before I just uh, move on. It's not okay. I'm gonna be on uh -huh, honest and say it's not okay. It hits a little different, this one. Yeah. She hits different. What's your handicap these days? That number seems to improve with every this golf digest. This fucking hot sauce is my handicap, bro. That number seems to improve with every golf digest. Holy shit, what is happening right now? Uh, I don't know what it is right now. I don't know what anything is right now. 
fuck you? Walking it off. Give me a second. It's a great bomber, by the way, Justin. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> oh man, that's emotional. I was gonna go to premiere tonight to support my wife, but I think she's gonna have to support me now. This is real. I don't know what's happening to my equilibrium right now. All over the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like I feel like I've been poisoned. Because I have. Is there cyanide in this? Oh, man. Yeah, no, I've seen people when they go, like, don't lick, the people who have done this before, they're like, don't lick your lips. And yeah. I just did it. <laughs> and I, I, I know what they mean now, I regret. I regret it. I played Augusta, which was pretty crazy. I got to play with Justin Rose. I also got to play with Clint Eastwood. Um, have you ever had the pimento cheese sandwich at Augusta? I have. Overrated or underrated? No, no, no. It's it's it's. You gotta hit it. Yeah. Um, another famous food item, uh, Olympic Club. They do their hot dogs on hamburger buns. That's really good. I'm glad to see you're having some sort of reaction. Listen, I'm human. I'm human, Justin. You you're, know you've. I see you, they edit the shit out of you because you look Teflon <laughs> on this shit, bro. Why is this like a thing? Why, why are we, why? You don't have to. No, 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 no. We've made it this far. I'm not gonna run like 21 miles of the marathon, <laughs> okay? Respect. All right? I'm gonna have IBS for like a month. But, but pretty kick-ass YouTube video to show. But, uh, I, well, <laughs> we'll see, won't we? Something, there's gonna be a lot of ass real mm -hmm. soon. <sighs> all right, all right, okay, okay, okay. All right. Do hot ones, they said. It'll be fun, they said. Are you having a good time? I am. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I am. So Marilyn Hold Manson. Hold on. Sure. Hold on. Sure. How do they do that? The time yeah, release yeah, yeah. thing? Right. And that's the like, bomb a, goes that's off. like a Willy Wonka. <laughs> it's a trick. Hot sauce thing. They lull you into that sense of false security yeah. and then. Like a everlasting gobstopper <laughs> where the hot sauce comes in. So Marilyn Manson once said that people underestimate how badass you are. And that under. Marilyn, man, Marilyn's awesome. And that you can have a dark side. Do you feel like Marilyn Manson understands you in a way that few others do? The first time I ever met Marilyn, he came up to me at a party. Someone tapped me on the shoulder and I turned around. I was like, uh, hey, what's up? I was 21. And he goes, he's like looking down at me and he says, I think your debut album is the most genius thing that's come out in the last five years. I was like, Whoa, thank you, bro, that means a lot. I was like, I think you're a fucking genius yourself. And he goes, Please don't tell anyone I told you that. And he walked off. <laughs> but no, years later, like Marilyn and I, we kicked it a little bit. I, I, I love Marilyn, he's, he's a rad, rad human. All right, Justin Timberlake. It's happening? It's happening. It's happening. You, you're just going Widowmaker, Marilyn Manson. Last dab. Last dab. Okay. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna hit it. I'm gonna hit it. Whoa! You're not joking. Let's, uh, let's, I mean, how many times do you do hot ones? Until you do it again, right? Exactly. <laughs> Can we count on you returning, Justin? <sighs> you know what? Get back to me on that one. I'm gonna go with a strong yes. I'll come back. You heard it here. Well, that's yeah. nice to hear. Um, um, I'd come back. All right. Cheers. Cheers. You didn't go. I'm gonna go. You know, no, I can't no, no, have no, no, you. No, you no, do no. this I all the time, so it's like I can't have you. That yet. wasn't a challenge. I know, but I can't have you doing that. Okay. Doing that to me over here. I'm gonna regret this, right? Uh huh. We all will. Okay. Okay. All right. 
Okay. 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 I gotta psych myself up for this one. Hey, let's make some noise. Uh, thank you. Ah. Uh, Yeah, okay. All right, Justin, here we are at the top of Spice Mountain. Oh God. One last hurdle to clear. And you know, your friend Jay-Z, he loves to dive into one of the most classic of all fan debates, which is ranking his albums. Okay. You've won 10 Grammys, dozens of top 10 hits, a worldwide fan base that's always craving the next thing. And still kind of say all that. So from your unique perspective, mm. right now, with your brain it's on very fire, unique right now. scrambled, uh -huh. how would you rank your own discography? Ooh, okay. Okay, well it's hard to do. I understand. For a lot of different reasons. One, I can't even see you right now. <laughs> Two, you try to do something different every time you put a record out. Uh, explore a different sound, a different sauce, if you will. Justify was my debut coming out of a boy group. Wanna explore my own sound. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming now. Um, Future Sex Love Sounds. That album happened because I wanted so badly to make an R&B album with Justified and I was young and naive and got my all up in my feelings because it was under the pop album category. And uh, my tongue is numb. And uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna go write that song right now, my tongue is numb. And so I decided, well, if I'm pop, then I can do whatever I want. So that's that became Future Sex Love Sounds. And then 2021 and two was really like an exploration of how expansive can we make the music. And then Man of the Woods uh, being my most familial album. A lot of people don't know this, but my son's name Silas means of the forest or of the woods. So it more or less was a dedication to him. But uh, I don't know, I guess I would say Future Sex, maybe then Justified, 2021. Man of the Woods, and then 2022. Well, thank you for sharing. That was very generous of you, Justin. And That's look a... at you, you legend. All the way down the spicy wing gauntlet and just a little sweat on the forehead. You look great. Perhaps better now no than when water, you walked into your hair. <laughs> no water. And now there's nothing left to do but roll out the red carpet for you, my friend. This camera, this camera, this camera. Let the people know what you have going on in your life. You guys, don't let this discomfort be in vain. Support my family and go out and see Trolls World Tour. You're gonna love it, but it's been worth it. You're a great guy, model American, and uh, we did it, we did it. Did it. Great job. I have a buddy who's like hot sauce aficionado. Like he brings like a truffle hot sauce and then he brings like a crazy hot sauce. Like he does like, he brings a ghost pepper hot right. sauce. And I was like, bro, I'm doing hot ones. And he was like, what is life? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> that was fun. That was fun. I don't know what I said, but I would do it again. This is the part where I have to remind people. Be careful around your eyes. 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 Careful around your eyes, Yanni. Careful around your eyes, Corda. Oh shit, yeah. Careful around your eyes. 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 Just be careful around your eyes. Oh god. Careful around your eyes. Careful with the eyes. Yeah! Be careful with the with the I'm ready. Might be hard for you to even touch your eye like if you wanted to. Anybody with acrylic nails is making strong life decisions. Can't touch her faces, so that's a good point to bring up. Thoroughly wash. Thoroughly wash.